Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me get my earphones. Give me a second, give me a second. Some of y'all over there, y'all rushing me already, man. Y'all over there talking about, first the video don't have any picture on it, now, now the sound messing up. Oh no, we got we got some good quality sound over here. Sound like I'm in a studio, huh? Nah, I'm just messing with you. What's up today, my wonderful family? Thank y'all for tuning in to another video. Listen, I appreciate you more than you know. Hey, it means a lot to me that you'll take time out every day to tune into this video. I'm going to be talking extremely fast because I don't have that much space on my phone. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk until the time cuts off. But uh, I'm just praying that this video will help somebody out there, okay? Listen, what I want to talk to you about today is the word that that's, uh, the Lord put on my heart tonight. You have to make God Lord of all, in all, through all, or not at all, okay? What do I mean by not at all? We have some people that choose to make him, they don't choose to make him Lord of all. They don't choose to make him Lord of all, okay? And this is exactly what I mean when I say Lord of all, in all, through all. That means you have to invite him in on everything, like make him Lord over your marriage, make him Lord over your finances, make him Lord over your career, make him Lord over your car. Like lay hands on your car before you, you go to work in the morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over this vehicle, Lord. Let me arrive safe, Lord. Uh, anoint this car, anoint the streets, Father God. I pray your canopy of protection over me. In Jesus' name, amen. Like just pray, like just make, make, make him Lord over your car. Make him Lord over everything, okay? And I want to I wanna help you understand something. Like... God loves you so much. He loves you so much. And he loves it when you come to him and you call on him. Let me explain what I mean. A good father, if you wake a good father up in the natural, let's say your dad and he's in there sleeping and he's snoring, and you go up to him at 3 o'clock in the morning, you wake him up, hey, he's probably going to be a little mad when he wakes up because he may have to get up in a few hours, okay? But, um, but pretty soon after about five seconds, he'll shake it off. And he'll go and he'll he'll look at you and you may say, hey, you may you may be six years old. You may say, hey, dad, can you give me some orange juice out the refrigerator? You know, the refrigerator is too heavy. I can't I can't open it. it you know, I can't pop it open. He going to get up, put his little shoes on. He going to get you some orange juice. Why? Because you're his child. He loves you. Of course, he loves his sleep, too. But he loves you so much. He'll get up out of his sleep. So how much more do you think your heavenly father loves you? You can approach his throne boldly and talk to him and ask for whatever it is that you want. God loves you so much. He created you. He created your, your little fingernails. All right. I, every time you bite your fingernails, you wonder how, how they keep growing back so fast. That's because of God. Like God created you like that. <laughs> God created your, your knuckles, man, where you could knock on somebody's door. You didn't come. You didn't make your own knuckles. See, people, man. Like you have to stay humble, man. God, God had is doing a million things every day. Like God, man, I'm telling you, God is awesome. The things we take for granted, God made, man, God made you with a special purpose. He gave you your own fingerprint. Come on now, He gave like nobody in this world can be you if they try. Like I can't be you. I may want to be just like you, but you know, you know, I can try to laugh like you. I can try to dress just like you. I can wear my hat sideways like you. <laughs> I, I can try to be you, but pretty soon people will say, you know, you, you, ah, you, you're a copycat. You know, you're not really like him or you're, you're not, you're not really like that guy or whatever. You're close, but you're not like him. In other words, people can spot a counterfeit. Okay. Now the question then becomes, how do you spot a counterfeit? Well, we don't need to talk about that on this video, but even in the natural, in the bank, right? The, the way, the way people can detect a counterfeit they don't study the millions of counterfeits out there no they study the real two dollar bill the real one hundred dollar bill why because if you spend more time studying the original you can spot a counterfeit whenever it comes in don't waste your time looking at the counterfeits there's new counterfeits being made every day if you spend so much time studying the original you'll automatically spot a counterfeit okay but that's a whole nother video so when i say lord of all in all through all or not at all okay like I said, make him Lord over everything. Now, the question then becomes, hey, how can I make him Lord over my family, over my career, over everything? OK, this is listen, this is all you have to do. I'm challenging you watching this video to take out a sheet of paper. Now, automatically, I, listen, I, I'm just being honest with you. When I say take out a sheet of paper, it's about two percent of y'all out there that's going to do it. Hey, I'm just being real. All right. I'm just being real. It's only about two percent of y'all. But listen, <laughs> I'm here today to help the two percent. All right. 
I just want you to write one thing down. That, that's all I'm asking, all right? And some of y'all out there, you may take out this sheet of paper. You may not write anything down. Listen, if you don't do nothing but take out a sheet of paper, ball it up, and shoot it in a trash can, hey, look, I'm proud of you, all right? You, you did something, all right? You did something. Some of y'all out there, listen, just take out a sheet of paper and shoot it in the trash. All right. We're we going we gonna to worry about writing something on the next video. All right. But, but those of you who really want who really want to grow, I'm just challenging you in this area. And this was placed on my heart tonight. And uh, I know this is not. Well, hey, maybe for everybody. Let me not speak any, you know, numbers or anything like that. Hey, y'all forgive me for saying that two percent, man. You know, because, hey, that might have discouraged some people. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to aim a little higher. Y'all, y'all got to forgive me, man. All right? Y'all forgive me? All right, we good. We good. All right, so listen. Take out that sheet of paper. Here's what I want you to do. If you are a father, you know, if you're married, you have children, listen, this is what I want you to do. Take that sheet of paper out and write down a time for tomorrow. I don't know. It may be 8 o'clock, 8.30. Like, schedule a time of prayer for your family. That's what I want you to do. And it ain't got to be no long prayer. The prayer could be one second. All right. You may say, man, listen, I, I don't I don't like to pray. You know, I had man. Look, I hadn't read my Bible in three years. I don't even have a Bible. I don't know any scriptures. What you want me to do? How am I supposed to be the man of my house? How am I supposed to be the head of my house? So how am I supposed to be a spiritual leader? Listen, do what you can start where you are and use what you have, what you have. You will never be ready, but you must choose to step out on faith and do it anyway. Be be real with your family. Invite your, your 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 wife and your children into the living room or wherever y'all like to pray at. Y'all can pray in the bathroom if y'all want to. I, I I'm not sure. I'm just I'm just saying whatever. Just do whatever. Write down eight o'clock p.m., nine o'clock p.m., ten o'clock. I I don't know. Just do something. Put something on that paper and stick it on your wall so that you can see it every day and be reminded of your commitment. Join hands with them before you do that. Say, hey, look, y'all. I'm gonna be real. All right. I don't know any scriptures. I really don't even know if I trust God right now, to be honest with you. I don't know any scriptures. I don't got no Bible. All right. But look, hey, today is a new day. We're going to start. We're going to start praying in this house. All right. Y'all not just going to walk around here and eat beef jerky and throw beef jerky under the couches all day. We're going to start praying in this household. Okay. We're going to let God in on what it is that we're doing. Okay. Even though we don't know him, even though we don't read our Bible, even though we don't know any of that stuff. I don't know. We don't go to church. We don't do any of that. But guess what? Today is a new day. Join hands with them. Step out on faith. Make your prayer short. All right. Hey, just be real. Make it short. You don't know anything. No, hey, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Pray for only one second. Lord, bless this family. We love you. Amen. And now look, y'all go to bed. All right. And y'all go watch a movie or something and enjoy yourselves. Okay. Listen, you just took that step of faith. Now, guess what? When you call them back in to pray tomorrow, oh, oh, it's turning into a routine now. They're starting to take you serious now. Okay. You, you're getting consistent now. Now that little kid, he's not playing on his phone when he comes to your prayer anymore. Listen, the, the first time you call him up there to pray, let him play Pac-Man. He's going to bring his little phone, playing SpongeBob and stuff. Hey, it, it's okay because he probably looks at you as a joke. He probably say, look, he talking about praying. He ain't gonna be doing this. You know, he ain't gonna be doing this no more than two or three days. It's gonna wear off. But pretty soon, when he sees your consistency, when your little cousin sees your consistency, when your son or your daughter or your your wife or your uh, sister, who, whoever it is you're around, when they see your consistency, then they'll start taking you serious. But you can't blame them for wanting to play Pac Man while you're talking. Why? Because you you never deliver on anything that you're saying. So challenge yourself to be consistent in what it is that you're doing. Challenge yourself to be consistent in reading God's word. Challenge yourself to be consistent in your marriage and whatever it is that you do. Showing up to work on time. Whatever it is you do, challenge yourself. You want other people to take you serious, but you don't even take yourself serious, okay? So I'm just challenging whoever it is out there. Listen, be consistent. Write down a prayer time every day. Pray with your family. You don't have to know all these scriptures, man. Don't let people out here fool you, man. All right? Do what you can, start where you are, and use what you have. For what you have is plenty. Nothing, nothing will be perfect. Just step out on where you're at. Look at this video. I don't have lighting on this video. I don't have the best sound. You know, as a matter of fact, this, these headphones that I have right now, man, a dog chewed on them. All right? I'm glad they still working. You know, like... Hey, I'm going to use what I have, though. It's not about production or the lighting on this video. I'm trying to reach. If I can reach one person tonight and they change their whole household, look, to God be the glory. All right? <laughs> to God be the glory. 
It's none of my business who this video reaches, but guess what? It's every bit of God's business because he chose to use me as a willing vessel, but I must be able and available. I must, I must be able to release what it is he put on my heart. It ain't going to be for everybody. Some people probably click on the video. Oh, ain't no picture on it. I'm gone. Hey, God bless you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not for everybody, but it's for somebody. I always remember that everything is for somebody. So whoever you out there, I want to tell you I love you. Set that time for tomorrow and pray with your family. Take that step of faith, okay? Let them know, hey, look, we don't know, we don't know any scriptures. We don't. But we're gonna start today. We're gonna we're gonna go on Google. We're gonna look up a scripture. Everybody gonna read it. All right, cool. You know, every day we're gonna look up a brand new scripture. Look, we're gonna learn together. We all in this together. God still love us. You know, Jesus died for us, right? <laughs> you know, we're gonna learn together. Now they could take that journey with you. Stop trying to be Superman and be real about where you are. Let people join your journey, man. You're not perfect. Stop trying to act like you're so... That's why people can't relate to you. You try to act like you're perfect all the time. Just be real. Hey, listen, I love you all. And, uh, man, I hope you have a great night. And uh, remember, do what I said. Uh, make that time. And, uh, you know, be, be consistent. And uh, most importantly, make God Lord of all, in all, through all, okay, above all, over everything. Submit your life, submit everything to him, your family and everything. And, and, and watch how your family dramatically changes all because you chose to incorporate prayer, okay? Hey, listen, I love you. Uh, you have a great night.